waiting for? David Cassidy. Who's he? A pop singer. <laughs> David Cassidy. I really like him. Imagine I've been waiting about, oh, it's about, yeah, about two hours. Oh, no. First few to come here. <laughs> Watch him every day on TV? Uh, if you can. Yes, I think he's a good performer. Oh yes, I'm going to his concert. We just love him. Yeah, we love him. Why? Because he's just beautiful looking. Good boy. Good boy, but I don't like the songs he sings very much. I think he's gorgeous. I love him. Four years he's been, he's been known for four years and I've been waiting a while, so four years another hour won't hurt. Yeah, it's really nice. It's about time he came out anyways. Yeah, there's too many false predictions on when he's coming. I won't believe it till he comes out of the door. He's going to come and talk to us? They'll rush him off to a car. Because everyone Why come he can't come up and talk to us? Yeah, the day off. Did you take the day off too? Oh, we took the afternoon off. All day off school. Anybody more? Oh, no, no. You've got all the people? Yeah. Although life is a serious game Was it I who played wrong? Or do I belong to the small few Who get lost in the race We still seem to Pretend that they're daydreaming. On something as huge and complex as David Cassidy's world tour, first of all, there was an awful lot that went into preparing for it. And uh, I'm here to more or less oversee and coordinate. I'm not here to make any loud noises and to pull out contracts. Uh, many people have wanted David over in Australia for a long time, but because of, you know, filming and recording, uh, he hasn't been able to come. But uh, the actual preparing for this particular trip, I would say was probably three months in preparation. Uh, let's say I got started uh, with David's touring from the very beginning. He started touring in March of 71 and I was involved in it at, the, at that time. Being David's manager's associate, uh, I guess I just kind of fell into it. Um, you know, I'm biased and I'm prejudiced because I know David and I know, da I know just how talented no, I can't say that. I don't know just how talented. I think he's even more talented than I than I imagine. Um, I, every time I see him up on stage, it's like uh, seeing him for the first time. Believe me, you really don't have to worry. I only want to make you happy. And if you say they go away, I But I think better still, I'd better stay around and love you. Do you think I have? Never see me frown 
So everybody's staring at me. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Well, to Australia and all that. Well, it's really been great. I'll see ya. Uh, <clears throat> I suppose I'm sort of in charge of this whole thing. Do you want to ask me questions or something? It's a bit of a shock, I mean, having people and focusing and clapping their hands, take two and all that. So just today's welcome at the airport upset you? No, not at all. I mean, it was, it's really quite nice. I mean, if you think about it, to have that many people that are really that impressed with seeing you and that really like a preteen kind of an audience, like those magazines and things. You know, you, just, you don't see anybody that's 23. Most of the kids in there are 14 and 15 because it's easy for them to identify with. So consequently, I would think that my appeal, I mean, is is uh, almost a freak at this point, you know, and I would say to a, a good degree o over, you know, I mean, for 9 and 10 and 11-year-olds, you know, I mean, it's, I would imagine it's a little difficult for them for, to relate to a 23 or 24-year-old human being. It's difficult for me now going back and doing the old hits. I mean, I'm going to do, in concert, I'm going to do all the hits and some other things, some new things and some things perhaps people wouldn't expect, but whatever it is that I should decide to do, I mean, I now am, it's a really luxurious position to be in to say, well, I don't have to worry about paying the gas and electric bill. I can just do it because I want to do it. How do you relate to acting compared with playing music? I don't relate to it much anymore. And now it's difficult for me to, for me to relate to it because I haven't done really any acting in, in so long. I mean, it, it became just like a little, a little, thing that I'd just walk in and go zah, 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 and then walk off you know I mean it was never really any acting involved in doing the television show you have to draw back like I mean all people that have made the kind of transition that I think that I'm gonna have to make uh, <coughs> kind of move back from it and really get a proper perspective and let um, and let it happen I mean it has to be a gradual thing it's not gonna be overnight for me it's interesting you know there have been a lot of places that I've been to where I've had images and stuff and preconceptions as you said you know Australia I had absolutely none I mean it was like I was walking off the plane into you know Mars somewhere it's so far away and I you know I just had no idea what it's like over here so I mean this is my first day here or second day here. yeah I mean I it's you know I mean it's a it's a place that obviously I knew that was part of the British Commonwealth and all of that but you know I mean I've never been here I've never touched earth here so I don't really know anything about it you know and I, I wasn't really taught that much about Australia and its its history and I'm not and I'm be, not being condescending and saying that I, I just didn't know anything about it that's all is there anything you'd particularly like to see now you're here well I'd like to see my room again if I get a chance you know I I don't know I'd I just like to go out in the street and walk around and meet some of the people and um, get a feel of what it's all about you know? Minnesota night and our souls were a little bit higher. Didn't we have ourselves some kind of a summer? Didn't we have ourselves some kind of a time? I 
Guess I never took the time to tell you how much I love you Soto died on a hill it couldn't climb in Montana. Exactly, you know, I mean, I almost have to just put myself into a, a consciousness that is like, okay, I'm going to go in there, they're going to fire questions at me, yeah. and a lot of them are going to try to get in there, no, are, are going to want to turn it, exactly. And I got to be prepared for it. So yeah. it's almost like putting up. So you become objective about yourself. You got to try to be. Yeah. Also, you know, you have to understand that people that are coming up, don't. A lot of them don't really care about knowing. A lot of them, it's just a, it's a press thing, and they're they're doing it all only because they're being wooed by people, and it's it's a free drink, and it's you know, okay. And a lot of them tend to become a little bitter about it all, and you know, I've been to so many thousands of them. They don't really care about you, you know, and I. I try to take it with a grain of salt, you know. I try to. Yeah. Sometimes it does hurt me. Yeah. You know? Well, there are times when I think that it's not. I, I don't wish it were all over. I just wish it would hurry up and develop into something, whatever it's going to be, die or grow or whatever it's going to be. I just wish it. You know, there's a transition that I think that has to be made on, and I think that um, I think there has to be a low. Yeah. I think in order for there to be any kind of intensity again, right. there has to be a lull. It has to come down. And I feel like it's doing that. You know, yeah. I mean, I feel like it's four years. And, um, you know, you uh, people, I mean, that have had sustained careers have had all had highs and all had lows. And um, I would almost like to experience that, you know, <laughs> really. Yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah, and I, in a sense, I, I am beginning to experience that because it's changing. You know, I mean, the kids that were 16 that were digging me four years ago are now 20. You know, yeah. some of them have outgrown me, and some of them feel like, well, I can't, I no longer can place myself into, into that because it threatens my own self-image as a 20-year-old yeah. human being yeah. to like him and feel threatened by it. So, in a, in a sense, I have to, I have to represent something else to them in order for them to be honest with themselves, uh, to like me again. You know, I mean. I, I'm speaking in broad strokes, and you know, I get that feeling though, yeah. from, from folks. Thank you. Um, um, well, I, I, Regardless of where it is and how many people I was playing to, it's like I never really get nervous except for when I'm doing a show. Like right before, like 10 minutes before I do a show, I get like tense. I 
start pacing and start talking to myself and things. And I, I mean, I would imagine I'm quite rude to people if they come and want a, an autograph or something because I don't, I don't want to talk to anyone. I want to just be by myself. And it's like an energy thing. I mean, it like lifts me up, and uh, it's a high. It really is a high. And uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that you know if it does, if I never do another one. I mean, it's, it probably will be one of the greatest highs in my life going out and experiencing that kind of energy. I mean, with a thousand people out there all focusing all their energy and all their attention on you. I mean, it's, it really is great. Yeah. David Cassidy! for you now that uh, hopefully I'm gonna sing a song for you now it's off my latest LP it's called puppy song I 
Hello? Hello? Yes? Well, it'd be preferable if you didn't. <laughs> yes. That's right. I started on my part of it last beginning of November because New Zealand was our first concert and their deadlines with magazines, for example, were something like three months. And um, so there was getting the material together and getting it over, which was in fact quite risky because the physical contract hadn't been even signed at that stage. And what sort um, of material do you have to get together? Well, you have to update you know, what he's been doing since the last time the record company, for example, had any to, anything to do with the artist. And when it's somebody from another country, you find that the material isn't as easy to get. And you've got to get a total variety of pictures. And in David's case, from the television series through his concert performances to his recording. Because with those three outlets, you might as well capitalise on them all. And um, on the other side of the tour, uh, the actual physical setting up of dates and venues, etc., started last September. Yeah. You, um, do you get much feeling of um, any contact with the fans when you're on tour with them? Uh, what sort of, uh, do you get much opportunity to, in each particular city to uh, form an opinion of uh, what his fans are like? Most of them, <coughs> well, from, from what I, I've seen of them, um, I mean, they're really just sweet little kids that, I mean, there's their idol and David's image towards that market. Hi there. <laughs> All together now. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 What's, uh, can I have your names in... in Betty. Betty. Julie. 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 Julie and Julie? Yeah. yeah. The Julie sisters, huh? No. Well, have a seat. I uh, was out playing with a kangaroo today and I ripped my pants. My best jeans, too. Well, it doesn't matter, I suppose. I got the uh, rockin' pneumonia, boogie woogie blues. What are these here? Butte. I'd hardly say I'm one of those. I'm gonna have to get a bucket to carry all this stuff back with me, okay? Thanks. Should, should, I, uh, should I open it now? Yeah. Okay, I'll do it. Expensive though, and the winner is Australia. Postcards, great. You know, I just did a postcard. I, I spent like 30 minutes with Henry's pen and stuff to a good friend of mine back in the States. I really like that. That's really nice. 
Thanks. Is this a letter from one of you? Okay, why don't I, rather than spend the time reading that, I'll read that. Along with get back on the plane. Can I do that? <laughs> That's wonderful. Should be a disinfectant they put in the hotel rooms. Thank you. What sort of things do they write you about? What sort of things do they talk to you about when you get to meet them? Well, it depends. I mean, it depends on the individual. Often, it's about me, you know? And it's often they're almost reading into what I'm doing, you know, songs and things that I'm writing. And, um, saying I I understood what you're saying and I know I really understand how you feel and I want you to know that I really on top of all that gloss and stuff that we read I really do like you as a person I really understand that that pleases me too that they get a little bit beyond all the hype and the press and all of that and I that pleases me yeah, yeah. that must be nice it is nice concept. yeah yeah so far I mean it's just been as I said I mean I, Australia's just been like paradise for me That's good. Oh, oh, thanks, Dave, for coming to see us. Well, thanks for coming to see me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Could you autograph this? Please? Sure, I can autograph it. Ah, yes. Henry Dilt, Hawaii. I, um, I've really had a great time thus far. And if it continues, as good as it's been, um, I'd like to come back again someday. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bye. Nice Bye. seeing you, ladies, again. Bye. See you. See Bye. You take care of yourself, okay? See you. All right. See, See you. Bye, Julie. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Hello. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Now, listen. Listen. If you don't move back, we're going to have to take David off because the stage is collapsing. Now, move back. Come on. Back. Get back. All back, then move. Come on. Further. I'll stop the show until you've moved back. Now keep going, otherwise we'll take David off. Otherwise it's gonna be people hurt. Now move back. Move, come on. Back, we've gotta repair this stage before we can go on. Back, come on, further. Further, come on, back more. We've gotta repair the stage. Back, otherwise David's gonna get hurt if the stage collapses. Now move back. You don't want David to get hurt, do you? Yes, everybody in the front, sit down for a while, yeah? Come on. Sit down. Sit down. There's good girls. Beautiful. Sit down. Lovely. Come on. Beautiful. Beautiful. You're all gorgeous, every one of you. Now listen, the stage has been fixed, and I want you to take it easy this time because a lot of girls are getting hurt in the front here, and I don't want anyone hurt. And I'm going to bring David back, okay? Let's go! All right. This is uh, a little unexpected, but if we sit down, everything's going to be all right. The stage won't collapse. I'll be able to sing the songs. We can clap our hands and rock and roll a little bit, okay? This next song was uh, just a number one record for me in, I think, England and somewhere else. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it's a song off my last LP, and uh, you know The sun was in the sky And it was burning in your eyes Nothing in the world could bother me Cause I was living in a world of make-believe And now you're gone I'm just a daydreamer I'm walking in the rain Chasing after rainbows I may never find again too beautiful to live it all alone Oh, how much I need someone to call my very own Now the summer's over And I find myself alone With only memories of you
Song. I want to stop my feet a little bit, clap my hands, stop my feet, so we're going to keep right down and uh, sit, hang with us, okay? One, one, two, three.
we're going to be all right. If we all sit back down again, we're going to stand up. We're going to have to... Let, yeah. Uh, just try sitting down. Come on. I mean, I want to rock and roll too, and I know it's hard. I want to come to you, and you want to come to me. So just if we just push back, the stage won't collapse. We can sing some more songs and do whatever we're doing. Okay. All right. I want to sing a song for you. It was a hit for me. Uh, it was written by a real good friend of mine, Tony Romeo. It's called, well, I'll tell you what it's called. I am a clown. I am a clown. You see me smile whenever you're around. Come on, back up, sit down. Sometimes my scenes are good, you know. Before I, before I got over here today, as I, as they were coming to pick me up, I uh, been playing up in my room a little bit. You know, I lost my, uh, I lost my voice last week, a couple of days ago. However, however, I'm, it's back. It wasn't meant to be a cue. I was just applauding myself. Anyway, I want to do a song for you that I wrote. It was on my last LP, and I wrote it when I was riding home on a bus one day. And uh, here it is. Get back to my home. 
Take a look around at the places I remember Will my picture come undone? Such a long way back And his boys lost track of the place when he was young And I'm back on the street where I used to live I'm passing no friend, he was holding his kid And I swear I can know Never call my name And I'm back on the river Where I was hooked in It's Charlie McLaughlin He always played you Now I know why they say You just can't go home again Friends and I Could talk Such a long way back And his boys lost track Of the faces and their name And I spoke I scream at the corner of the store Double deck cone and dime anymore Have things really changed so much Is that just me? You know, always find myself uh, picking up bits of uh, it's a hard day tonight and all that. So you know. for you that uh, was really an important record for me long time ago a couple of years ago when I uh, when I I got an old bound shoe okay wait okay no more shoes no more shoes I got my dancing shoes on anyway you know so okay I want to do a song that was the first single record for me it's real important and I want to sing it for each and every one of you that came out today you're beautiful
wish that I could mold you into someone who could cherish you as much as I cherish you. Precious moon that more than a pride. I think I'll come right over here. the superstar of the 70s, David Cassidy.